creators of content. They're not discriminating, but on the other hand, they can be anywhere, and you won't expect that they are there. And this is what's causing the essential tension in this new uh, environment. And you will be surprised who they are and what capacity they might have. This little flip camera has basically the same capacity as a normal high band uh, television camera. It costs about $100. That makes this guy who wanted to interview me in northern Iraq recently a member of the media. It ends up on the web. It is a new form of mass proliferation of information and often in real time. I've heard a lot of mention, for example, about the media, but it's about so many websites out there, so many sites, all of which you are familiar to you, but think about the implications now of something like Flickr, where people can post their pictures. And of course, with YouTube, it is about broadcasting yourself. And that's the fundamental change that has, that, is, that, that has now made life so difficult for so many uh, uh, institutions of state. Pretty obvious, but it's about a new transparency. And why is this important? Because in those times of tension, when the generational um, leaders in the institutions of government and the corporates decide that they've got to react, they've been caught unaware, they are surprised with what it all reveals, and therefore they swear a bit like the Burmese and say, it isn't going on, it is a sky full of lies. There are those out there, like for example the former US Defense Secretary, who will say, well, give us the benefit of the doubt. There is no room for that in this new merciless digital 24-7 environment. Whether it's coming from the old man carrying the mobile phone, using his eyes, maybe a bit emotively to describe what's going on, or the young, smart, born digital who happens to be there when something big takes place. Yet, too often, and I'm sure we hear it uh, in Delhi, it's the media, damn it, who are to blame. And that is essentially a visceral response to this new reality. It is confirmation, if you like, of this new sense of vulnerability. But too infrequently, those institutions of power fail to get on the front foot. And we heard a number of cardinal new principles from both the Foreign Secretary and your former, foreign sec uh, former Minister uh, this morning about what needs to be done. But I don't see it fully happening uh, here uh, in uh, India, certainly. But your predicament is the same as in Berlin, as in many other countries of this world. Everyone is wrestling with this, what I call the, 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 the real challenge now of real time. Pretty obvious, but it builds on what Philip has been saying and writing as well um, with his many uh, studies. It's about real time, but it's also about the tyranny of real time. And why do I call it tyranny? Because the tyranny is cruel and arbitrary. It hits you when you're least expecting it. That's when the public expects most and finds the synchronicity between delivery and policy delivery uh, a broad gap. It's got even broader than that. It's no longer about just real time. It's about the timeline, the tyranny of the timeline. And I can tell you from many who've been in positions of power, when you ask them what was difficult, it was the tyranny of that moment of crisis which they were not expecting. Broadly, I would say it's become, on information, a race for space. A race for space. People in government don't like to race, but that's the way it's happening. And what I find interesting is trying to share uh, with those in, in government and those in positions of power and responsibility, if a, moment of if a moment of crisis happens, where there's something strange about this USB, so you'll have to uh, bear with me. Um, where do they think of, of their minds at the moment? Where is their system in this new environment? And I would say that broadly, forget about the first fast and flawed, broadly the mindset is to think about several hours into the crisis. That's where the information edge is. But relentlessly, in the last few years, this is the way it's going, and the systems have not kept up. The information edge is up there in the top left-hand corner. Greatest impact in ever shorter time. And that line, that half-life of time to react, is relentlessly, mercilessly moving to the left. That is what is uh, so difficult for those in positions of power and government uh, to uh, respond to. And up in the top left-hand corner, greatest impact, shortest timeline, that's where the tension is. 
What I would be doing now, but I can't do it because the software isn't on this laptop, I'd be turning a webcam on you and saying it's no longer about a few minutes with the SD card, with the uploading on the email. It's now about now, timeline zero, a web camera on you showing all of you live, being streamed live. And that's what systems of government have yet to come to terms with. Let me leave you with, for those of you who are in policy making, whether uh, former or present, the mountains are beginning to move, and a year ago I wouldn't have said that, but the mountains are beginning to move on what I would call behavioral change, and the National Defense University, uh, based on a presentation I gave six weeks ago, are moving very quickly on this, and it's fascinating to see. Let me um, underline this with what is where we are in the new information space. We're talking about a wave of democratization and accountability that is now shifting and redefining the nature of power. It's not just me who's saying that. It's, for example, the new head of the British military, General Sir David Richards. It's now about much more than an impressively modern media industry. The internet and linked technology like mobile phones and mini cameras allow communications that are way beyond the state's ability to control now without threatening all the other functions of the state. And I'll leave you with this quote from someone, I'm not gonna tell you who it's from, but as we're in that kind of environment, I can share this quote which was on a platform, but uh, not for quotation by name, a very senior person in uh, the security field who has to worry about the sovereign resilience of a state. The power of the state to control citizens has declined. Communications technologies have changed the relationship dramatically. Citizens now expect the right to be told the truth. Our room for maneuver is declining. The relationship of the people and the state is changing. I've been warning about that now for 15 years since I did my first study at Harvard, but that in the last year particularly is inexorably what has happened and what is leaving such a difficulty for so many in positions of power and responsibility when it comes to the information space, which is not the media, it's about what the public want through the media.